80% of the times you may not have to resort to a particular test for diagnosing a diabetes type. Uh, but uh, the gold standard for type 1 diabetes diagnosis is antibodies. So if you can, we should try and make effort to have multiple antibody panels rather than just doing one antibody. Because as you have seen, GAD antibody alone can be negative in about 30-40% of people. So if multiple antibodies, if antibodies are positive, it is type 1 diabetes. If antibodies are negative and clinical features of obesity, insulin resistance are there, then you could clinically classify the person as probable type 2 diabetes. To, I mean, in general, I'm always kind of very conscious about labeling type 2 or other types of diabetes. So I kind of see uh, for some months how the progress is uh, there. I'll tell you why this, why this is so. Uh, so then if that is, if answer to that is also no, then you should proceed with the genetic testing. I said that in this source limited setup, don't emphasize on antibodies if there's a lean child coming to you with ketoacidosis and they even see a 14%. You don't, I mean, you don't uh, force them to pay 10,000 rupees for the antibody test. You could safely assume that it is type 1 diabetes and start the child on treatment. Uh, I do think that doing a pancreatic imaging uh, is important, if, particularly if there are any abdominal symptoms, steatoria or unclear type of diabetes. Now the reason I said about being wary of type 2 diabetes is because there's a 9 year old child whom I saw a few years ago, 2012 or something, uh, who presented with diabetes with very sticky urine or some, there's no classic osmotic symptoms. He had A1C of some 8.5%, was oh, quite obese, had insulin resistance. We diagnosed it as type 2 diabetes clinically. But a year later, he came with a drastic weight loss and uh, I couldn't explain what is happening. And when I checked the antibody levels, the GAD antibody levels were high. So generally, when I'm labeling someone as type 2, particularly before puberty or something like that, I am very careful and we have to document antibody panel and sometimes even the genetic tests. Which means that sometimes you have to reassign the diagnosis. It is not, you, your ego shouldn't come in between the thing that I made this diagnosis, so this is the only diagnosis that is there. So you may have to revisit the diagnosis and you may have to relabel the person as some other type of diabetes. Now this is an exercise for you, just to see uh, if you're awake. This is a 13 year old boy uh, who presented with ketoacidosis. He went for a trek with his friends. Uh, he climbed some mountains in Uttarakhand and he came back with ketoacidosis. Uh, his BMI is 26, he has uh, significant acanthosis. Both parents have diabetes. Actually, his father unfortunately passed away of a premature coronary artery disease. His blood sugar is 480, his A1C is 12.3, his creatinine is 0.8, and his lipase is 2288. What type of diabetes is it? What type of diabetes? How many for type 1? How many for type 2? How many for pancreatic uh, diabetes? I see more hands for pancreatic diabetes. Well, at this stage, I don't know. At this stage, I don't know. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start this child on the treatment for DKA. So if you have DKA or if you have severe hyperglycemia, start with insulin treatment. Play safe, start with insulin treatment. Don't just go on uh, experimenting. Obviously, in DKA, you, would, you won't experiment, but I'm talking about severe hyperglycemia otherwise. So he was, uh, so we further uh, observed this child, the pancreatic imaging was normal and the lipase settled after DKA treatment over a period of a uh, couple of weeks. His antibodies were negative, his C-peptide is low. What type of diabetes does he have? How many antibodies did you do? The panel, the entire panel was Everything negative. Was negative. Four, four antibodies had. So, uh, on follow, he had further weight gain, ecanthosis, sleep apnea, and hypertriglycemia along with hypertension. And uh, it was a youth onset type 2 diabetes. So, youth onset type 2 diabetes can present even rarely, it can present with ketoacidosis. It could have uh, severe hyperglycemia. So, clinical course is very, very important. Is this Dr. Flatbush? No, he's stuck. Youth onset type 2 diabetes. We don't call it Flatbush. We don't call it Flatbush. So please keep your eyes wide open for other types of diabetes. Have an index of suspicion. 
try and make definitive diagnosis of diabetes type. You may not succeed 100% of the times, but please try and make. Clinical classification is relevant, is uh, often enough for making diagnosis, but uh, wherever possible, use the diagnostic tools such as antibodies, C-peptide, imaging, and even genetic studies. Now they are commercially available and the past has come down, so we should use them a little on a wider basis. Thank you.